team band. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second season of the day here. WGU versus Maneski finally starting, and uh, I'm pretty sure we just delayed the game for a couple of minutes because Mushi still Ten had to finish his remaining. PUBG game, and he didn't even win. <laughs> God damn Five it. seconds remaining. I'm Drag Job, John Beckerworth. How are we doing? That's Southeast Asian Radiant servers are hard. Uh, he, he, got, he got top three. He, he placed. It's fine, I'm sure. I see a Pangolier. Pangolier. I see a Techies ban. I see a Techies ban. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I can't say that I'm too uh, too torn up about it. Now, what what do we have? Lots of Five lots of five roll supports. Silence a Cottle, Wyvern, Rasta, Rubik. So it looks pretty good from that angle. Um, I think WGU probably want to ban out the Tusk against Jabs. He's been playing that a lot, and he's, he's had his hands on it in his Captain Draft games. Uh, Mushi Spectre has been pretty spectacular as well. There's also Dyer the Doom that is, back. you know, that kind of one hero that can counter anyone, you know, just throw, it, throw the one spell on someone. So there's a lot of heroes out there that are reasonably good kind of targeted bans against teams, but also overall. Um, outside of that, you know, usually we look at you know, Weaver and Ember and these kind of seconds, you know, mobile can. carry or core heroes often having good times Five in these seconds, you know, hero really? pools because there isn't that much guaranteed lockdown. Yep. But there's plenty in this pool. You know, Global <laughs> Silence, there's Hexes, yeah. there's Stuns, there's Silences, there's the Doom removed. We'd likely just see Pangolier get let through, but that might mean someone like Ice 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 will pick it up and, you know, show us how to play the hero properly. Oh, yeah. I'd be very excited about that because uh, we have seen a Dark Willow once, like two days ago, and uh, Ten seconds remaining. that pretty much confirmed that what everyone else was saying already. That's a pretty Five strong hero. Like, you just cast the spells and they do really good things, time and time again. But Giant Pangolier uh, had a bit of a less positive response in the overall scene so far, so maybe a little bit harder to figure out that type of hero. Medusa ban, interesting. I mean, there's very little mana burn, there's very few heroes that, you know, can control the Medusa outside of maybe, like, Shadow Shaman. There's yeah, Invoker EMP, but Invoker is a very niche pick nowadays, so isn't likely to get picked up through this draft, and I don't, I don't think Maneski have ever really played it all that much. All right, time to ban out the Jabs Tusk. Come on, WG, don't, don't <laughs> let him get that hero. It's been so good for him. Well, it's the last chance. But, uh, I don't know. It's, Ten it's seconds about the heroes remaining. Well. I mean, the Earthshake, I'm looking at that guy up top. Um, as his one remaining. Five seconds remaining. Four position heroes in the pool. And, uh... Dire team pick. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Well, they take out the Oshake instead, so Tusk is still available. And yeah, when it comes to offlane pools, it's one of the few ones that is more or less standard. Oh, not offlane, um, roaming rolls. Yeah. Uh, the offlane guess... also looks rather thin too, doesn't Ten it? Ten seconds get the Underlord. And uh, Batrider, I guess. Give me the winter wyvern offlane. Let's go. I mean, we we did see <laughs> tusk offlane for ice 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 the other day as well. So it's you know that yeah. kind of flex pick as well, where you're able to shift it from four to three if you really need to, if you do have a limited hero pool for offlaners. But yeah, like remaining. the fact there are two offlaners means that it's likely that Five you know, these teams are going to get one of each, right? <coughs> yep. <coughs> well, we'll see what WG want to start with now. The Wind Wyvern on the field kind of precludes heroes like uh, Chaos Knight, uh, even Meepo. Like, you don't want to pick that into, into the Winter's Curse if you can help it. Yeah, even like, you know, Luna, Sn uh, Spectre, even yeah. Sniper to some degree. Basically, just physical damage dealers get screwed over by Cold Embrace super hard. What so, you can w instead is go for into the magic damage, right? With, with uh, Peps Invoker, Lina. Radiant Ember Spirit. Uh, Lena. Ember would be a really good one, but there's Lena first. 
Also a good flex pick, right? Can go mid, can be support as well with rights, uh, right combos. What, what's this opener from WG? Like, do you go Lena Rasta, Lena Rubik, Lena Tusk? Ten seconds. I've not been a fan of Treant recently. You know, we've seen Happy Feet use it a number of times. Five it hasn't been spectacular. Remaining. Has had a few shining moments, but it hasn't really been that. Team the hero that controls the entire game. So yeah, they, they go for the Lena Tusk. They take the Tusk also out of the hands of Mineski. Nice little pick for themselves, but also a block pick up against Jabs and Ice, Ice, Ice. This is uh this is kind of a weird hero pool to pick to like progress through. Yeah. Ten seconds. Because now you can look towards heroes like, you know, Sven and CK for Mineski, those those heroes that you mentioned Five that you don't want to pick seconds. into Wyvern, you can you know, pick them yourselves potentially. Yep. Add some extra physical damage to the mix. There's definitely plenty of that in the pool. But uh, maybe for now you want to try and focus on uh, these other lanes first. Give me the ice, ice, ice pangolier, please. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see that, but I, I'm expecting Bat Rider to come out, probably. Like, Tusk is there to kind of try and snowball in, but uh, that only gets really effective once you have uh, the blink dagger so you can get right next to the target that's being lassoed. So you can still play around that to some degree, and there's still other counters really in the pool. They're taking their sweet time about it, though. Yeah. Like, this this, this could still potentially be like an offlane wyvern for Ice Ice Ice. You know, that is still uh, an opportunity for them to take. And then they could think about, you know, the five roll silencer. Um, the the difficulty here, I feel, is going to be Jabs' hero. So, yeah, they go, for, they go for the silencer. I feel like that's kind of a logical choice. Silencer can still, you know, between these two heroes, they can... Both be, you know, four or fives. One of them can give up farm for the other one. Wyvern can be offlane, which opens up the silence of five. And then they could still go for something, you know, like a Rubik. Ten seconds remaining. Or a, or a Treant. But I, I don't know, that, that makes, that makes Mineski remaining. lack damage in, in yeah. you know, severe, severe ways. So they, they need to find a way to get damage sources in, which, you know, heroes like Ember, like CK, like Sven. Uh, Mushi Sven, obviously, pretty damn famous. But... Spectres out there as well. This global silence is Winter's Curse. They are great tools at kind of, you know, resetting fights and giving that blanket of safety for maybe some of these squishier targets to thrive in team fights. Well, we're still dipping back into the reserve time here with the second pick of that phase. Yeah, there's so many options. It really depends on which way you want to go and which type of heroes you prioritize in the earlier parts of the draft. Because, you know, then you also have to think about, hey, what, what's WGU going to do next? What heroes are they going to pick? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you're, then you're all fighting over the same heroes as well, right? Yeah. Radiant team pick. Because right. they do go right. Invoker. Huh. Who's Invoker? So, that's the question, right? Huh, so... And then you like... Ten seconds remaining. I, I just like I know Ice Ice can play Invoker, but I you know, immediately assume. Yep. It's not too many combos with it in the early game for the Sunstrikes. So unless they want to pick up that uh, Shadow Shaman now, perhaps as the secondary support, and uh, do run that Winter Wyvern in the offlane. The yeah, alternative would be to just still pick up the Bat Rider, unless it's taken away from. WG, uh, by WGU now, they also have that option. Radiant team what? Pick. Bad rider! Nice. What? Went 71 out of 100 do uh, in poker games? Damn. 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yep. So there's the bat rider that we were calling for for WG. Up next, they go for the life stealer. So they've got the carrier, they've got the damage, they've got the control. Laning phase you know, doesn't look awful for them. 
but team fights, if they, you know, they're heavily reliant on finding that pick with a bat and a lifestealer. These infest bombs uh, kind of have to work. Invoker, Silencer, Wyvern, all susceptible to this, very squishy heroes, so they shouldn't have too much trouble doing so. But in remaining. real 5v5, you know, head-on-head -head clashes, these big engagements, it can be a little more difficult, you know, if the global comes out in time, if Invoker is able to ghost walk or take, like, tornado to disrupt the team fight, things can swing very quickly out of control. I wonder if Mineski want to you know, try and pick your heroes that can fight into that. You can kind of Dire turn things around and make WG. Yes! Oh, oh we yes! get it! Yes! What's happening? Pangolier for the first time in competitive thought, I'm pretty sure. And, we uh, got it. Captain's draft. We got Dark Willow. We get Pangolier today. Alright, so is this going to be one position? Ten is this going to be remaining. something else? Um. I mean, you're asking, you're asking the wrong person. Like, no, nobody knows yet, right? <laughs> nobody nobody knows, knows what this hero is meant to do. No one's found that key to unlock the hero, but it looks, with the way this is going, that it's going to be that one roll for Mushi, and then they put Wyvern offlane. At least that's yeah. how it appears in my mind. So I want to run some weird uh, acro lane with the sounds of farming. Ten yeah, seconds seems remaining. So final pick for WG. Five what do they need? Remaining. This Lena could still switch into the support role, they could have Tusk Lena support, and they could go for, you know, a different mid, like a Sniper, for instance, wouldn't be an awful option for them here. Otherwise, they're looking for that hard five, which, you know, Rasta and Rubik are the two remaining heroes, so it, it's either going to be one of those two, and they keep the Lena mid, or they're going to switch the Lena into support, and they're going to pick, like, an SF or a Sniper. But I, I feel like... Just picking like a Shadow Shaman or a Rubik here are still reasonably good options. Yeah. Shadow Shaman. Shaman. Alright, so some more control. I really wonder how they want to deal with a Pangolier. I kind of know what he does. But yeah, you, you said it. Nobody really knows how effective he's going to be. It is Ice of Ice picking it up right now, though. There it is. Okay, so what's Mushi? Mushi's playing Carry Silencer. Huh. Cool. Okay. Interesting. I wonder how they lane this then. Like, do they do Wyvern Pangolier as an aggressive dual lane potentially? Because they can output a fair yeah. amount of damage and really contest that lifestealer lane. Aphromoosh has the bats. Are they putting off lane Tusk then? Ten seconds remaining. Looks like it, right? Velo picks it up. Five seconds remaining. Pork champs being spammed in chat as the Pangolier comes out. I like it. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it compared to like uh, a spirit breaker charge, except you don't stop charging after you hit people. And uh, you are magic immune, so if you had a hero like a Bane or something, what's happening now? Oh, it was paused. We're paused, so apparently. Very curious time to actually pause with Dota Logo still out, but there we are. Um. So, you are magic immune, there's nothing really that... Uh, I, I, I guess WG, they do have the bad weather lasso to still control them up. If you can get close to them, I don't, I'm not even sure if that's possible. Short of uh, Aphromoosh picking up an Eithland or something. I'm, I'm just so happy Isis Ice has this hero and not Mushi. Like, not, not flaming Mushi, but Mushi is much more the kind of solid player, you know. He goes from A to B to C and everything is very standard and, you know, logical. Isis Ice is one of those guys that is just like, Fuck it, I'm going in. Or... I'm just doing this thing that you never expected me to do. And Pangolier feels like one of those heroes that, you know, because it's new, because no one knows exactly what it's meant to do or what item builds it goes for, Isis Ice can just, you know, pull something out of the hat and be like, yo, this is how this really works. Let me let, let me show you something, small son. Let me let me just show you what the Pangolier is capable of. 
But yeah, enough enough focusing on that. That's uh, that's our fun done. Uh, WG Tusk Offlane Batrider Four has the boots up already, which is kind of interesting. Maybe just to sit mid with Firo to give him an easier time up against the Invoker, try and bully Moon a little bit more while they'll have X Nova plus Jabami, the the dual lane with the Life Stealer and the Shadow Shaman, able to find kills, and Velo can just be you know, self-sustaining in that offlane. For now, though, we might just see uh, one of these 5-on-5 five five engagements here. They're kind of grouping up towards the one direction, and it's just Delta Mineski uh, where they want to go. Looks like they go <laughs> and go to this other side of the instead. Nice and nice. He's going deep here, and he might get caught straight the map. Snowball takes almost everybody. Now, okay, okay, that works. <laughs> Where's the pawn? Come good on. escape, guys. It's a good escape. He, he just used it. It's a cool what, what a hero. Five guys <laughs> snowball on him and he's just... Aha! Ha, 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 ha. Never mind, guys. Swashbuckling. Next time. Swashbuckling away. So amazing. Mm. Alright. Yes. <laughs> so... Oh. Halo actually going to the low ground. Mineski's setting up here, uh, up on high, exactly have a lot of control in the cell, so they will put the snowball further in towards the Wyvern. But to know about being fine. They'll take a lot fine. of damage on, but, well, don't have stuns, but they have a lot of slows. And it'll be the first blood right here. First blood. Oh, Arcane Curse, that. <laughs> Arctic Burn, Leech Seed, there's no way Velo's escaping that. So they'll get themselves double bounty rune for Mushi. It looks like as the, the carry hero returns to top lane. Jabs is going to sit mid, it looks like, as they expect the Batrider of Aphromusia. It's going to be dual lane mid for the most part of the early game. Now trying to pressure the Invoker and then trying to counter pressure the pressure on the Invoker. We'll see how that lane all pans out. Velo maybe dies a couple of times up top. This isn't an easy lane with Treant and Silencer, especially with the start they've had. You know, the first blood, the double bounty runes. Mushi has had an amazing beginning to this match. There's mid lane, there's the battle. Afterwards, <laughs> gonna spam Napalm with the Wyvern's gonna use the Arctic Burn, but that's a really long cooldown for Jabs to contend with. So Afterwards should be able to start taking the better trades here with the Napalm being stacked up, forcing Jabs away. But they're giving they're the Invoker stick careful. charges. Like Moon bought a full magic wand. Some... Halo, big slow down, just around for this. If he gets close, I'll couple punches. Oh, bot lane. Kind of like that. Angle here. I think it's going on actually right now, with those shackles. Strong right clicks of his own. And another shackles. He... Yeah. <laughs> He's just taunting out. <laughs> of course. He's kind of running out of region though. Still has a few tangos to munch on. Shad Shaman so far doing a good job zoning him out. Is that taunt music really loud for you, by the way? It's kind of loud, yeah. It's like loud. It's like louder than ever. Oh god! Cold snap mid. They're on. But it takes round though. After Mush is there and it's scary enough for the time being. It's pretty paranoid missing kills. He's up on him again. Next Nova. Okay, they they're fighting the shackles zone. One more right click. The sun spray coming in. Got it. <laughs> it's all flying next to each other. That very hilarious. Murder suicide. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Romeo and Juliet there. Oh, Moon. Oh, he dodges the LSA mid, but there's still Firefly with three Napalm stacks on him. Slow down Aphromush himself, though, with an ice wall, but not slowed down enough. The next Light Strike away will land. It's a good cold snap. Here now, a bit of a turn run. And with the cold snap, damage over time from Jeff. Cold snap not quite lasting long enough. Shards will not connect. Stun Strike, though. Ooh, barely being dodged. So you cannot dodge the leaf seat. That would be enough. Gaps actually with the illusion. I need the last bit. Still worth it here, bringing down the invoker. The longer you can delay his might, the longer you can delay his levels and his farm. Yeah, only six the more and time and space you have going forward. Only six and four with Alina sitting at seven and ten. Fira with a ton of denies over this invoker, but it's still Aphromoosh sitting mid. And it's still Moon, you know, getting a decent amount of experience. This this lane should progress to be pretty decent for the Invoker. He shouldn't have an awful time. And of course, you know, can always go back into the jungle with Forge Spirits and Alacrity just to farm there. 
Uh, top lane, Velo, you know, he did, he did make that rotation mid. He's managed to not feed away too many kills top, but you can see from his levels, struggling a little bit, closing in on level three, but not doing particularly well there. Uh, I just want to keep an eye on Ice Ice Ice, though. Just continually spamming out the swashbuckle, spamming his taunt. X Nova, not happy about this. Alright, so how does it work? It says you dash in that direction? Or something like that? Or. Uh huh. Yeah. So, I don't know. Because, like, he, he threw it out a moment ago and then didn't actually go anywhere. What do you mean? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just missing. Because it's like essentially like the uh, slide of fist, except you end up in the direction that you're targeting, right? You just move. I mean, you, you you move and you aim to a place. Okay. Huh. So, like, so like he can run back and shoot forward. Okay. Still confused. All right. <laughs> Probably gotta uh, play it myself to really get the gist of that. Now Ninja Boogie has a haste rune. He will try to do things. Setting up in mid, perhaps. Pharaoh yeah. goes too far forward. <laughs> but on the tower, Sunstrike will not start. I think that hits with Gold Snap. They turn things around, though. Lightstrike here has landed. Come on, right takes Ninja Boogie. He's the one to die first. Ice. Uh, yeah, he's coming around. He actually got the kill on the Eddie Snap. The way all the way from the bottom lane. The first rotation of the Pangalia. Ice SI starts things off. But yeah, they, they kill the Lena importantly, like alleviating this awful, Radiant awful amount of pressure on the Invoker. But the Hand of Midas is Radiant gonna arrive here eventually, right? Moon catching up a little bit on CS, not looking amazing, but oh down at the bottom lane. Ice SI, it's a little bit too far in. Trouble here. Goes down that uh, jump, but it's not gonna be enough. Or is it with a swashbuckle forward? After the time to keep track of him, slowing him down with Napalm. Firefly is gonna expire soon, and uh, extra slows coming through. After the time, very deep slows. Jababi, they really want to kill the Bangalore. One more right click will do it. They cannot quite get in range from Shrine. Now Jabs is flying, also stops. More slows here from the Napalm, and another right click. This time it is uh, Shivami who gets that kill. <laughs> There's a full Radiant Creep Wave following them as well. <laughs> the catapults here, they're going to TP back to their wave. Because tier, like tier 1 bot, Radiant side, took so much damage there because there's a catapult wave that comes into it, and their wave wasn't meeting because it follows the uh, the Pangolier all the way up. Yeah. That's like, not honestly, not that bad for, for Mineski. <laughs> like, okay, you lost two heroes. Yeah, okay, it, it's bad. But you get something back with all that tower damage at the tier one bottom lane, which is really nice. And also, Isosize manages to drag the wave back in close to his tier one. So he's going to get plenty of experience from there as well. Up to level four now soon. Probably just makes up the first two skills, I guess, before the hard effect. Maybe get a value point into it at some point, but meanwhile, looking in mid again, Moon continues to be pressured. After Moon just giving a creep wave, but a bit of a turn runs here with the cold snap, Ninja Boogie making his presence known, and uh, he will end up dropping down. Protect the Moon Invoker at all costs. Putting a lot of emphasis on that just because, like, no one needs to be top. Moon is perfectly fine just uh, laning himself. Max up the Glaives of Wisdom already. On the score silencer and Velo, he's he's struggling with that. Seven lasted three, 48 and 22 denies on that silencer. So yeah, it's gonna be an issue. He's gonna extra stop right click hard. Super super hard. Velo at least has hit you know level five, closing on six, and that's when you can start you know playing with the bat and the shadow shaman, looking for smoke ganks. X Nova currently holds one, so I wouldn't be surprised to see you know maybe the supports TP top and you play aggressively onto Mushi. This Sansa is again. very squishy. Time and time again, Pharaoh, it's that's the problem with the Lina with no defensive mechanisms whatsoever. So you get caught with a cold snap, trying to turn around, it doesn't work. You're trying to light strike away, it takes forever. Easy setup on the sun strike, so Radiant give damage here just from these two heroes going for the Lina. And yeah, it's uh, again another kill means okay, gets closer to where he wants to be. Here's the move. Ex Nova smokes, they have the lifestealer infested inside of him. 
but Mushy <laughs> reads the game. <laughs> they know Lifesteal is not bot anymore. They feel it coming, and this smoke gank will come to nothing. They wanted this snowball initiation. They wanted to fight up here, but they're just going to have to cut the wave and try and damage tier one. But because of that move earlier, this bot tier one being such low HP, Minensky can destroy this and potentially come back and defend the top tower themselves. Yep. Hit with the creeps. Hit with the tower. DP already coming through. That's uh, <clears throat> the boogie. They did see it coming. Drop down dust. Drop down a wall to try to bring down the screen. The diving bear decoy. Kind of comes way to his free friends. Here it comes the Pangolier. But that is the roll for Hori Boulder. Coming through, just bashing everybody, jumping out of the shots. <laughs> Not really doing too much, but. When you scare the shit out of your opponents with that rolling thunder, just like, oh god, who, you know, who else is coming? If Isis Ice is rolling in, there must be people backing him up, right? But no, he's just disrupting him, making sure that you don't take the tower. Early does. A little fortune and against Alina. Oh, that Laguna Blade. Got a quick snack here. The unsuspecting moon. Without Lasso, without uh, anything other than. And again, though, Mineski did not want to take this lying down. Ninja Boogies on the side. Mushi, make the rotation now to just take over middle lane for the time being. He's already got four staff. Lina goes back for the phase boots, realizing how this kind of laning phase has deteriorated for her. We'll move into the Bloodstone afterwards, but may even consider going for a Yules or a Shadow Blade to precede that Bloodstone. But we'll see how it goes for her. As Ice 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 has his brown boots, and it looks like he's heading straight into Diffusal Blade with the uh, with the swashbuckle, you know, applying the effects on all those hits. It's pretty nice. Oh, top, Velo, jumped on, Pangolier's in. Ooh. Rolling straight out again, the wall, but they're uh, dragging him all the way into the dire side jungle. Uh, yeah, he's got die. Nice, well played. Plus two. That's the one thing, right? With the silent turn kind of free found on top, the one thing that you don't get is necessarily many early stacks of the intelligence. But, uh, he's gonna get there, he's starting to move around more, just trying to meet him. And who cares? At level 15, you get the plus two insteal talent, you know? Just start killing people then. Farm and farm and farm, hit level 15, and then you start killing people. <laughs> get those plus fours. So that and so that means you you steal like you steal four right you remove four from the enemy and you gain four like I just I just had to like make sure that that made sense in my head because you know yeah four intelligence is a lot if you start stealing intelligence from life stealer from tusk cool. they're not gonna be able to cast their spells anymore <laughs> like there's barely enough mana pool for this yeah exactly <laughs> Four stops away, Snowball all the way in deep. Now the Gold Science to turn things around. Another Thunder bowling, rolling, whatever, on Pharaoh. Front racking down. Swashbucker forward to Dutch Lights Wrecker Ray. So Ice as Ice with the place. Getting that kill. Velo's in trouble. The rest of WG will be able to get their way out. Maybe, maybe not. Ice shots to try and block in the Silencer, but it would discourage to keep him in place for a little bit longer. Forcing out another Snowball. This time he owns the Pangle there. The Velo will be racked down. Another plus two. Yeah. Ice, ice. He's, he's casting his spells, he's doing things. Mixing out the shield crash, it's a uh, nice damage nuke actually. Makes him very tanky. Yeah, he's not just sitting so, in the off lane, he's not farming, he's actively roaming around looking for kills. This is like this is like a, you know, a, a roaming three roll. He's had farm priority from the three roll, he's got a decent amount of items and gold saved up, but it's these actions he's making, these kills that he's setting up or baiting in, and just disrupting the enemy team because they can't focus him. They can't kill this 900 HP Pangolin. They can't because he's got shield crash level four. He's got rolling thunder. They're trying to go on him now, but he's just gonna escape. Like, how do you catch him? He swashbuckles away and it's like, yeah, what up? They will get the tier one at the very least, but Mushi goes in on bottom lane, X Nova in all sorts of trouble. Yeah, it's the uh, tragedy of the Shadow Shaman. Like, oh, hey, you're next to me. I'm alone. Goodbye. 
he just has Radiant nowhere near the uh, defense utility that some of his other team teammates have. Like Taz, no. he can snowball delay, Thunder maybe attack. make some sharp play here or there. But uh, Shadow Shaman, he's just trying to get his levels, trying to get his money. Because they need these blink daggers. I mean, Batrider is working on it now, but the blink hacks from the Shadow Shaman is going to be invaluable to just, uh, try and counter out the mobility that's tankiness from a hero like Tango here. So this is something that Maneski have been really good at over the past, you know, two, three months or so. Uh, one, of, one of the big reasons that you know, they did so well at the PGL Major, why they've been doing so well recently, reading the map is, you know, a very difficult skill. Because you have certain bits of information, you have, you know, certain lack of information, you kind of put uh, pieces together to, you know, create a picture in your head of what's happening with the enemy team. The first move by Mushi to, you know, leave top lane to come back, and now the move by Moon, realizing that this lifestealer with Batrider and Tusk, they're going to be looking for infest kills, and as long as you dodge them, the snowball from the Radiant really does halt very, very quickly. And Moon just, like, TPs out from top lane, lets them have the tier one up there, and I don't know if they read this. This is a very aggressive move. Yeah, smoking through the dice at jungle, running straight to Moon, but Jab, thankfully, right next to him at the same time, though. Protector that does get caught is, is very deep himself. There's no rage. Strike. They look for more, yeah. It's nice to that. She's super, super low with all damage over time. He will not quite take out to it. The rage is going back off through that. But it's almost very bad for WG after all. They did get Ninja Boogie though, who was lurking in, but he got an Observe Ward down, which you know, was his intention the entire time. These two wards working wonders here for Maneski in this Radiant side of the map. Uh, what's, what's Mushi heading into next? Oh, he's got Rod of Atos complete. Mushi is so farmed on this silencer. Damn. Point uh, 1k, level 11. Moon also like bumped. getting close and closer to that point, but Midas continues to go. And halfway to the Agony Sector, so he's about to be super fight ready as well. And then there's a big question mark still, Ice as Ice. He does have the Fellow Point half here, so now starting to max up the Swashbuckle. And uh, you can start doing some damage with that too. Even maybe try and go on after Moosh if they really want to. Ninja Bogey scouting out Halo's leaving that. Illusion! For now, just leaving them as it is. How close is Ice to this Diffusal Blade? No. Oh, basically, just a recipe away. And it's gonna be pretty nice for him. You know, the purge from Diffu to slow people down. Sure, it doesn't dispel anymore, but who cares? It's still a ton of damage for this melee hero. Oh, yeah. Just to pump out right clicks with Swashbuckle. And uh, that is the final position. Overall, keeping on place. The roll forward into the bash, into the jump. Do another bash. The sun strike just in case. Look at Mushi coming in range for the Sounds and steal too. And... That initiation range is ridiculous. Yeah. So Treant finds him here and is like, okay, I've entangled the Batrider. Ice as Ice comes from like 1500, 2000 range away, something like that, and just rolls in immediately onto, like, immediately on top of the target, ready there with a the damage, not going to be countered out by anything. And this Aphromush bat still struggling to buy the Blink Dagger, which they so desperately need to really get a grasp on this game. You know, Lena's struggling to get to Bloodstone, which is one of those. You know, do or die items. Either you win a couple of team fights and get a load of charges up, or you die three times in a row and the item becomes not worthless, but much, much worse than you had intended it to be when you first started buying it. Uh, Definitely not worth as much money as you paid for it. I'm not sure what Aphromush is doing here. He wants to get Ooh. the last though. He does get it then. That does cancel the Rolling Thunder, doesn't it now? The Global Times are trying to turn this around as well as Japs. <coughs> with the Golden Brace, so now Dust and Mushi is there with the damage of time, slowing down the back rider, and he's going to die first. And that's going to be needed to even Halo. Continue to drop a lower and lower. Now the shards, uh, the wards, and Pharaoh in the back coming through. They do zap down the tree, and it's first casualty, the second very one will be the one to Wyvern left to his own devices under the tower. With this wraparound, WG, that's something good going under the belt, and yet the initiation on the Mangalier. Like, so I guess it's one way to do it. Dash, sure enough, they, but they get, what, two support kills? They lose their mid-tier one, Invoker is still free farming in the meantime. And Isis you know. just goes straight back in. Down to half hell, setting up for the sun strike, not even committing to the kill themselves. It must be so sad as Moon, he's throwing these sun strikes and every single target dies like a split second before the sun strike lands. <laughs> yeah. Mushi just like clears up the last hit there, there's another one earlier where, you know, 
the freaking Pangalia comes in and kills someone before they get the Sunstrike to land. Oh but yeah, it's kind of <laughs> Good, it, it looks it looks decent the beginning of that fight you know they get the afternoon's lasso in onto the pangolia as the as the uh the rolling thunder yeah, is transforming into it and it was like okay maybe they can kill him then the global arrives then mineski they read it perfectly they were all there the one hero missing was Invoker, who's shoving mid but they had the other three heroes ready behind isis eyes ready to turn the fight oh fear oh no <laughs> almost you don't have enough damage at this point? Probably not, uh... but... I just... Oh, that is... Um, no, not quite. What, what, 60 pure damage. He is listening at like... Yeah, it, it would have been like 150, 200 health off killing. But, yeah. you know, it's the it's the fear of someone backstabbing you there. You know, the pangolier sitting behind these trees and coming in from the side. You never quite know where Ice 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 is. He's moving into Blink. Interestingly enough, not going for upgraded boots. Uh, straight into Diffusal Blade and then straight into Blink Dagger, it looks like. Thank you enough in his own right. Doesn't need to... You know, no Sand and Yash, no Vanguard, none of this nonsense. No Solar Crest, no Radiance. This is the Ice 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 way. So far, it's working out well. 4, 2, and 4 on the Zero. Oh, you have to just later complete it on a lifestealer, so damage output is available. But no real initiation potential from these heroes just yet. Uh, Blink Dagger, so far away from the Sand Rider, even further from the Shadow Shaman, as like, Nova is like buying all the wards and whatnot. And just look at how aggressive. So, Isis Ice is playing aggressively bot lane to pretend that there's people behind him. Then they go in on mid on the bat, and Isis yeah. Ice is already backed up. It's like, it's gonna miss. Avarush. Ooh, does he so get away? He the damage all time, actually. He might. No more false stuff, no more anything, so... Bit of misplay, perhaps. Yeah, barely missing yeah, out on it, so... Barely off the mark. Bat gets to keep his gold, gets to stay on track for that blink. But it's just that overall maneuver there, right? Isis Ice shoves, shoves in one extra wave, uh, where WG kind of expect that this Radiant Jungle is, you know, swarming with dire heroes. Even with the observable they've got up now, uh, which they've just placed, uh, they likely wouldn't have you know, seen a smoke or something coming in behind Isis Ice. Then as soon as the smoke, yeah, like all these lines are being drawn. As soon as the smoke comes in, oh, top lane, Pharaoh. Oh dear. There we go. This time. He dies. There we go. This is uh, much more blocked though, almost. The match, right? You can make the argument, all right, slowing down for the blink. This extremely valuable, valuable at this point, but uh, he's going to get it eventually, regardless. And it's already super late anyway. Yeah, it does. Just... Ruben have a chance to farm jungles. Even. Like this Lena, 21 minutes in, phase, nulls. You know, a couple hundred, 200 gold away from the full Bloodstone, but it all feels just delayed from WG while Mineski are, you know, snapping into these timings very nicely, taking towers one by one, objectives are being claimed. They don't have the best Roche taking lineup though, so they'll need to get a big teamfight win in order to kind of swing back in there. Invoker is the main hero with, you know, Forge Spirits and the Alacrity to deal with that Roshan, but we're looking at a level 14 Invoker already. A Moon having an absolutely, you know, spanking game already. Yep. Right up there with most of the other cores. The thing is, sure, you have the life stealer who's technically in something that works out, but only got a couple of hundred goals, and then Radiant the next three heroes are all dire. And then we move to one of those. But free kill on X Nova, who's just a punching bag almost. And uh, free things to the bottom. Now threatening Aphromoosh with the Arcane Curse, but I don't know to overly commit there. That is, uh, I'd love to have completed the Vera. At long last. But they've got Blink on Ice 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 now. This Pangalia is going to be an absolute nuisance. That's so weird. Bottom lane, there we go. Global Silence try and help out Moon. Still alive. Doesn't have too much mana to work with, but it does still have right legs to do with Nice little chart play. Jab still able to fly across and get the for the gold snap. And the task will still end up dropping. They're unable to help out. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, though, what's happening here? Ninja Boogie dusted up inside of it. But 
since uh, we went to Rushi, unable to really make anything happen with that without the life stealer in the middle of that too to provide the damage. And in the end, only the tusk dies. Yes. Well, the life stealer is still having you know, a reasonably good game. Top of the net worth. Uh, I say reasonably, but it, it's it's a pretty good game. The only downsides are, you know, the first couple of infest bombs didn't work out because of Maneski dodging them. They would love to have this bat rider blink. It's still 300 gold away, 250 gold away, until Aphromoosh has it. When that comes up, life stealer does have a lot of fun. He is a huge damage dealer at this point. So if they can blink lasso any one of these Maneski heroes, they die. Which is why Isosize is rushing straight into a Lincoln Sphere as quickly as he possibly can. <laughs> so is the Invoker, and so is the Silencer. All three of these core heroes, they understand that this blink timing from Bat is delayed. They've been allowed to get, you know, their primary items, the Force Atos, the, the Midas Ags, the Diffu Blade, as well as Blink across the three of them. And now they move into Lincoln's and it should it should time up pretty nicely. But the the first Bat Blink will will be used with the Infest before the Lincoln's arrive. Bottle spam to just force out rages and get rid of creep waves. What cool on this in 8 seconds? Pretty good. And, uh, WG, they can. Got it. They're buying the time until the blink is online, which is right the hell now. They're grouping up in that uh, spire, they're probably gonna smoke. If they have one. It doesn't look like they do actually have this. Yeah, actually has inventory. It's a full 5 man rotation. That's Mineski. This needs to kind of this needs to net WG some boy. big kills. Yeah. Scanning. Uh, they're, pretty, they're not connecting on anything though. Mineski's on the other side of the map entirely. Mineski reading the map again. Look at how tentatively Moon is playing, right? He's keeping his sphere of vision as wide as possible, making sure that he can see, you know, angles up and across so he doesn't get hit too hard. And now he just shoves in mid-wave. They, they have to go on this Invoker. He's the only one showing and being open. But Moon has Tornado ready. He'll get Ghost Walk up now and go instantly into Invis. And there is no way of catching him. Yeah. Yeah, he was walking away at the tower. Lift the lens a little bit. It's going to be deep. <coughs> going to be a trade regardless. And if they don't kill the tower, obviously, it's going to be Oh, Velo. And doesn't look like... Oh, God. In the middle of that, thunder. Uh, <laughs> just ice jumping around. However, he pleases. Like, and yeah, sure, they lose here to top, but they get killed again. He's caught again. He has to mid pass. Global signs to counter that out immediately. Ninja Boogie with the overgrowth already. Javami, now he's on the run. He's super slow. He's eight us up. He does have rage to work with. And uh, he has to set onto a creep for a second, but now out of mana, out of health points. We don't get anything off of that. Rushi just. His finger hovering over that arbor. And now, okay, link forward. This syntax makes no worse. He slow down. Trying to fear of guard into him. There is an element of, you know, Isosize being very good on this Pangolay hero, it being very new, and maybe WG not knowing how to deal with it quite so much in this game. But Maneski are just playing their, you know, solid standard Dota, pretty much, even with an interesting Captain's Draft draft. They're moving around the map as, you know, a unit of four. The Invoker's split pushing and getting himself farmed up. They've got Mushi involved in a bunch of team fights, up to 16 stolen intelligence now. You know, it's, it's not a huge amount, but it's it's pretty damn good for this point in the game. And he's got his plus two in steel bonus as well from the level 15 talent. Maneski... Do still have to fear the fact they've got this silencer as the one roll though. Now it's not, not not the best hero. Can still get picked off reasonably quickly if he gets you know chain stunned and hexed and blasted by a Laguna Blade. But WG we've seen them struggle to get in onto targets, especially when there's a five-man group from Maneski, but also just to stay alive in these team fights. Isis Ice has just been sprinting around, causing havoc, and he, so, he, he is so disruptive. Like he is a disruptive player, and he's on a disruptive hero. Open was happening and we're going to try and make this Roshan play. But the uh, Sunstrike scouting it out immediately. Man, that's too many. Yeah, that's that present now for WG to say, no, we cannot continue this. So, it's a little bit down. They are the ones who continue to have to dodge. At the same time, after which he's kind of alone together with Light Steely here, looking for a quick pick on an isolated target. Precious Boogie. 
trying to get over there in Invis, maybe trying to fade out that tree. Uh, a little bit. DD Triant. Like that, and now, yeah. I punch. It's pretty legit. 260, 270 damage. And actually, off the Roche. He's, he's falling fast. But look at how Isis likes to play. He's just holding this ramp. He's not letting WG yeah. get anywhere near. He gets the purge off on Lifestealer as he's escaping. Like, that's insane. Oh, man. Right, where are my invoker talents? It's time to start getting your talents up, Moon. Need me some of the double forge spirits. Need me some cat. I've not seen, like, we saw Cataclysm skilled the other day by the Gabby. I believe it was Gabby, but he never used I don't it. I think we've seen a cat yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing, because you have to double tap Sunstrike to use it. So I. It, it's one of those things where the first time you read it, you might just think, oh, I just cast Sunstrike, and it does it. But it's you know kind of a yeah. secondary ability to some strike, that kind of deal. Let's see, it's getting close to the low. Uh, you walk through a sentry, they need a little bit more detection. Though. And uh, instead, Ninja Wing gets the overgrowth off, Nader to follow. It's on two, Moon just can't cast a bunch of his spells, Ice Wall, keep after Moon in there. It's an easy kill, and it's. That's not supposed to happen. If they have another sentry there, Ninja Boogie just dies. Uh, Velo has pushed very far up mid lane. He stops four, question mark. Uh, exclamation point in a second. Oh, nice. Maybe not. Very nice, nice pick away. Very, very nice. Uh, exactly he's still going to get found. Ugly though, yeah. And Mushi, how does Mushi get the kill there? Magic. I guess I can curse, yeah. right? But yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was in range for the insteal, so that's probably a good, good thing anyway. He got plus four, so. That's quite nice, actually. Yeah. Uh, Lifestealer? All alone. That's a rage, that's a infest, but it's gonna be rooted up. Couple of right clicks from Moon, infest into one of their own creeps. Healthiest one, he's just gonna take it over and try and leg it. But now he can't infest into the Batrider and make plays through that. Ninja Boogie, oh god, he's backstabbing. He has vision of the Lifestealer creep. He hasn't seen the Batrider yet, though, I don't think. Aphromosh does have this nice little hidey hole, but now he's revealed. The Bat has been seen. Tornado actually lands on him. Getting that Leech Seed off, Global Silence, give it the cover spy, and the Batrider is the main target once again. But that's your down, that's. The only initiation that WG really have. Let's see, all of a sudden they are staring down the bottom of the barrel of the high ground with two catapults and the name Snowball. He knows the moon with a blink out on a job, Jabami. On the tank of He is tanky enough though, he gets some more stuff help. Quick more committed, and even with that low committal push, tier 3 tower down 680 health points. And they still hold on to. Uh... A nice little Aegis of the Immortal there for Moon. Yep. He has TP'd bot, so this might be an opportunity now for WG to make a play. But they're going in one by one. Yeah, Down the half health already, for the snowball all the way towards Pangolier. Protected, Stuart should end up falling here despite Golden Brace. Let's say that though, Windows Curse on two heroes. Overgrowth as well to try to delay things. But he'll end up taking out, but hey, Ice of Ice, he's jumping, he's rolling. He's doing things, bashing people left, right, and center. Not enough to keep uh, with the Wyvern alive there. Now he's kind of isolated, continuing with the jumps to make himself more tanky. 42% damage reduction seems pretty good. Now Jabami forced to rage away, does have another infest. That's deep creep, this is gonna be the night. Gonna jump him out of it. Ice, ice, ice in the middle, locking on to next. Oh, next Nova, he'll die first. Fair, next one, let's get this arm here. So, him against Mushi, and Mushi wins with the help of the rest of his team. And now it's just a straight up chase down. Jabami trying to juke and jive, oh. he's keeping it aside, they will not see him. Oh. And the very last Perfect. second, they knew. Oh, they found Velo! Oh, the rolling Velo. thunder! Ice to the ice to the ice. Another minus four. Oh, 36 God. int. We've gone from 16 at like 20 minutes to 36 now. He's just racking up this intelligence thanks to that wonderful talent. But this is... Mushi did 3.3k damage. Ice of ice. 
4,268. Yeah, he's, he's doing ridiculous amounts of damage in this game. Now moving into the Basher as well for the Pangolier to make that swashbuckle even more powerful. Pushing in onto, what, two lanes? Three lanes even. Maneski have every lane shoved in. Still Aegis on the Invoker. Not for long though. Six or seven seconds and that does get reclaimed by the big man in the pit. But things not looking so good for WG. Even with this lifesteal of being, you know, such a such a great damage dealer. The Lina just hasn't had an impact in this game. Firo is 4, 6, and 3. Got the Bloodstone. It's still sticking around 10 charges. Hasn't lost a drastic amount, uh, to be honest. Shadowblade and Crystalis now both up, aiming for that Daedalus. But the Lina has to be, you know, sitting on the back lines. They've got to initiate. Like, everything has to work perfectly for WG, basically. They have to have the Infest Bomb yep. with either Tusk or Bat rolling in, finding a target. But the question is always going to be, who do they roll on? Because they can't pop Lincolns immediately. Atos here, off the Shav Sham, which she forced off forward from the trees. Easy kill. Tomato with the dodge. WG, WG, they're just bleeding everywhere. Off the Moshi. It's available, Firefly's on the timeout, but it's actually Ice is Ice Link from first, trying to bait up those goals. Mami has the rage. Look at the first soundtrack, I believe. Back the lap for a moment. The lane is going to be pushed in the fight with Fortress with Lacrity. Going to take care of that tower sooner rather than later if he's allowed to. We always have to spread, okay? It's normal in. Not sure what this one, but Velo always gets to back out. Bami. Time. Tower is still taking damage. Off. Neski is getting what they came for. And Obviously, I need to defend. Now, with Exnova coming back, maybe the there's something. Tower. They get the tower denied, so hey. <laughs> Limiting what Neski can actually get off of it uh, monetarily, but they're not overcommitting here. They got the tower, Radiant's they're gonna get the tribes. They could probably get the next Roshan. May respawn in a minute to find out when exactly at that point. Do you understand how Swashbuckle works? Yeah. Radiant's top I think so, man. <laughs> Kind of shooting. <laughs> yeah, you move and you shoot. Alright. Uh, okay, bit of a fight here. Abdulmush has passenger, I believe. Yeah, but he's the first one down. Jabami is the one exit takes me. He's like, that's like, four stuff around here. Trying to keep him with the wipe alive as he's hex jabs with another four stuff. And I'll keep him safe. The uh, extra players. This desperation attempt from Aphromoosh. Yeah, unsuccessful. Yeah, very, very desperate move. <clears throat> they still do have Firo farming away. Daedalus is up. Buyback not ready yet. 560 gold away from it. And they are going to need buybacks to defend their base because Mineski are coming. And they are ready to fight. This backstab being set up by Velo and Fero might work out if they can catch into the Winter Wyvern or one of these squishier Lincolnsless heroes in the back end because they can't target the guys with Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. Radiance middle barracks are under attack. Very hard jabs. Uh, I'll figure out if something to miss here, Velo. Just to grab this. Get rid of the sigil. And, uh, Radiance middle. Still wrecking away the back. Getting the melees and now Baylor will actually get some slows on him. Snowball for Scout. Then the phone. Okay. Minus four. Still somehow has intelligence left. Not too much. Oh, Moon got the mid melee racks while they were trying to you know, force Baylor back. So objective one taken. Now look for the tier three bottom lane. Let's get yourselves ready for Roshan. One minute until he respawns. And Beneski, just full control of this game, honestly, from start to end. 23k net worth lead at this point. Were they ever behind? They, they had the lead from the beginning. There was like a little dip where maybe it went back to even, but it really just has been a one-way street. Virtually insurmountable lead in the next game. And Moon continues his uh, wonder. <laughs> yes, 
21 and with it, with the pop down. It sure is. Nail EMP uh, will be dodged for the most part after the first time of the EMP. Has kind of like the Desolate and that's a combo that's probably extremely effective, but not if you just fall so far behind and you can't get it properly or get it. Too little to really. They're still respecting high ground. They are not taking any chances. Playing a very disciplined Dota right now. Take the objective, get, in this case tier 3, and then fall back to deal with the lanes. Work on the next round of Ivy. This BKB now done on the Invoker. Tangalier going for the Nullifier after the Basher. Uh, Jibuki has a staff of wizardry. What's a four staff? Okay. Good next round of items. WG. Again. Good desperation move. Bad brother. Not much more but the blink in his inventory. I mean, I think his lifesteal is still technically scary. He has pretty good items to try to look at the map. Science makes it hard. Cataclysm! Do with that. A catacomb comes through. Not sure how many that actually hit. Gonna get one, gonna get two, gonna get three, and probably four. Once I realize that Giovanni came uh, popping out of a death after the. Yeah. Oh, what do I have nice? Zero. Gets a 3B plus the jump. And uh, Jabami making his way out. Rage TP. Uh, Rage TP, but Roshan open. But uh, you're talking about lifestealer having all this damage and being able to, you know, maybe rip someone apart. But who does he go on? Like, look at Mushi. Mushi nearly has a buff. Actually, probably in fact, yeah, a full butterfly is complete. They're gonna have Shivers guard on someone as well. The Invoker has a BKB the Lincolns. It, it's just all so difficult for them. But even if they have a perfect fight, it's. It's going to be like one of those one in a thousand plays where they manage to actually wipe Mineski. Like yeah. some calamity of errors has to happen where Invoker like, loses his keyboard and forgets to press his <laughs> buttons and doesn't get BKB off. And now there's a DD rune that spawns top. This opens everything up even better for Mineski. Invisibility. Oh, it's just uh, the nature of a 28k lead, I guess. Damage. Everyone is so freaking strong that no matter what you have, there's like one or two more items ahead of you. And that's how you really start to show when... Uh, if WG ever even gets to X, after one successful... I mean, even this one doesn't work. <laughs> uh, Promotion Velo both blink in, both get bashed back immediately here. I don't really know. Thunder, Mima mid, Sunstrike, only a normal one. There we go, hit by that, but able to uh, get away because of the Shadow Blade. Yeah, but he has no BKB. That's a real struggle that this Lina's gonna have against the Invoker. Having no BKB, only a Hurricane Pike is your main way of escaping from team fights. If you get hit by a tornado, you're likely gonna die. Butterfly silencer, blink silencer. Vineski, yeah. jump in. Lasso, overgrowth though, the rolling thunder is just running left, right, and center. Something about Baylor. Oh, Cataclysm, that's many sounds like. Big old sea of crate is here. Let's do the first one to fall, and now the focus is like the Nova Arrow B. Second in the casualty. And he shoots down, and Baylor, Baylor, they're trying their best. How to do anything reliably here. Let's say that Pharaoh is getting some off for now. Cold snap. Some cave trying to play this. He can't even get spells off because of that. GG has to be called out. Two minutes, 50 seconds. The best key is just that they know how to play Dota. A uh, very, very dominant showing by Mineski. I think even without the like the Pangolier there was fancy. It was cool. 